Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today I want to talk to you about my recent trip to southeastern Australia. Australia has always been a dream place for me to visit, but I never thought my visit to Australia would be quite like this. Well guys, we are seeing As you probably all know, Australia is up in flames and has been for quite a while and are very, very quickly wiping out many, many species. Many, many animals have died and perished in these fires. There are literally thousands of different species of animals native to Australia and many different species that you can only find in Australia, like flying foxes, koalas, wombats, kangaroos. All of those animals are currently being threatened. So before we get started, I want to share with you how I got my opportunity to go down to Australia to do this work. So I was able through my own funding to go down with Todd Driggers and three other people. So it was five people, um, including myself. Todd Driggers, if you look up on Facebook, his name, T-O-D-D-D-R-I-G-G-E-R-S on Facebook, he started a fundraiser for Australia so that he can send money down to people who are working very hard to help these animals as he has a big, huge heart for animals as he is a veterinarian himself and has been doing it nearly his entire life. And he started this fundraiser and before he knew it, a week and a half to two weeks went by. His goal was $2,000 to raise and he raised up to $60,000 and is currently at $70,000 and is still sending money to people who need it. Um, to help rehabilitate these animals that are suffering in Australia. Now, I don't want this video to be a sad, mopey video about all the bad things that are happening and blaming who for what or why certain things happened because I'm sure we have all heard plenty of that and there's many videos, many posts of people complaining about what's happening. And yes, it is serious. And yes, it's a problem. And yes, it's real. But my intentions for this video are to show you the positives of the things I saw in Australia and the things that are being done and the things that are currently in action to solve the problem. Because the fact is, it happened, all right? What's happening right now is happening and a lot of it has already happened and we can't go back. And the reality is, all we can do now is do our best to help and contribute and step forward and fix our mistakes because the reality is it happened and yes it sucks and yes it's bad but complaining about it all the time pointing fingers blaming people just talking about the issue and not actually stepping forward and doing something about it is almost just as damaging as the thing itself so i wanted to kind of show you in this video the things that i saw with the time that i was able to spend down in australia and how myself and you can help you're on the other side of the world and you can still help uh, the people that are working day and night every single day to help these animals every single day to find a solution to the problem and every single flipping day to help these animals live their best life and give them a future so without further ado here are some of the things we we're able to witness contribute in and even fund through Todd Driggers and his fundraiser while we were in Australia all right guys, I'm getting in the front seat for the first time. On the wrong side. There should be a steering wheel right here, but there's not. Just just for, because you have to. What are you going to say to all the viewers? Good night, Mike. We are currently going around and uh, going to different wildlife sanctuaries that are helping contribute with the fires and um, helping the animals that are suffering from it. Uh, so yeah, we're pretty much just going around and uh, 
Obviously, Dr. Driggers got the fundraiser up, and we are fortunate enough to be able to. He's fortunate enough to be able to donate a lot of that money to these uh, people who are trying their best to help. So that's what we're doing today. We're going place to place. It should be fun. We are here at Summers B Animal Hospital, and uh, we're utilizing this uh, facility of Robin Summers B, and. We've collected some of the wildlife, uh, some of the birds particularly, from the avian section of the Central Coast um, Rescue, known as ARC. Um, and uh, we're gonna go through some of the questions they had revolving uh, these particular birds. So we have uh, a multitude of birds, and as we get them out, we can explain the situation there. All right, guys, we're here to see some koalas. So the way we say hello to koalas is that um, our index finger is about the same length as their nose, and so they get to get the smell of them. Hello. Can we go home? <laughs> <laughs> Holy soft. They're so cute. soft. Yeah. So just greet first. Just yes. let them know you're coming. Hi, kitties. Oh. Oh, they're clumsy. <laughs> Look at their little selves. That would be a nice one. Look at him. Oh, you've got claws, buddy. Yeah, look at that. Claws right for days. <laughs> 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 Feel very good. <laughs> that one wants to play. <laughs> Come here, you. <laughs> yeah, you are goofy. Let's go. Oh my goodness. There you go. Okay, but seriously, even though this is like super, super cute, and a lot of you guys may think it's super, super cute, there's a ton of these right now that are actually, actually that are actually suffering, like truly, like it's a big thing. <laughs> Hundreds to thousands of koalas, just like this cute little dude, is being burnt in a fire and look how These precious they are. Oh, I, I'm, I'm having a, another visitor. <gasps> Come on. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I'm being loved by koalas. <laughs> Here, come in. All right, I'm gonna pass. This cutie onto you. This one's more one. Okay, ready? I'm just gonna okay. let him. Just gonna let him get on here. You care about the lots of shorts. They've got they've got some hefty, hefty claws. Oh my gosh. That is incredible. Definitely a new favorite animal. Little face. Oh, oh, here we go. Gosh. It's a really, really cool experience to do this, and it's like what makes me want to like take the video is to show how like precious these animals are, and to realize how many are like going through crap, and not even just koalas, but like it wallabies, like kangaroos, everything. Are you gonna jump on me? Is that what you're gonna do? Yeah. The worst part about this whole situation is that the animals that are being rehabilitated and treated and taken care of. Our intentions are to release them back in the wild, but the worst part is a third of the koala's habitat has been burned. Oh, burnt. Oh, that's good. There's no grass left. I don't even know what to say, honestly. It sucks. All of these koalas are being brought in, and there's like no place to release them. As koalas primarily feed on, or entirely feed on even, eucalyptus trees, and without eucalyptus trees, there's no food, there's no habitat, and no place to put the koalas. 
So there are sanctuaries that are likely going to have to be built to house koalas who don't have a place to be released and will have to be housed for possibly months and years before habitat starts to recover and habitat starts to be capable of sustaining koala life again. There's one of the burnt koalas. One of the burnt. Oh, she said, well, that one's a stinker. So if you just offer your finger. These, which is one of the Cuddly Creek fires. We often name them after the fire that they come in from or where they get burnt or from the area that they're burnt. And that, so, so essentially, I think I was assessing her on Christmas Day. <laughs> yeah, I know well, that's also the other side to it. I do worry that some of these are like burns we've just not found to start because the burns can take up to three weeks to show themselves as oh, such. Okay. Um, and particularly we're not really looking so much, we're looking into burnt fur, but you can kind of get the sense that none of these guys are really mm -hmm. what I call fombaned or lightly crisped. You actually see on his thumb, mm -hmm. remains of a bird. He's been determined to take his bandages off, so we have decided to let him be. And, and this is one of the worst burns. He was, he had, these were, quite extensive I mean I have got images of what he's like on my on one of my cameras because uh -huh. we try and track him a little bit and particularly if banner changes are being done by different vets you need to start to create you know photo files for them yeah. so that you can mm -hmm. see if whether it's going forward or going backwards uh -huh. um, and, and he's such. doing pretty good though yeah well again at the end of the day if you, you want to know that they're heading in the right direction right um, which is quite important the fires have been devastating for Australia's wildlife and wild places, as massive areas of native bushland, forest, and parks have been completely scorched. Australia estimates that as many as 1.25 billion animals may have been killed directly or indirectly from fires that have scorched all around Australia. I hope this has encouraged you to stand up and do something about this situation because personally, the things I was able to see was heartbreaking and seeing it in person really, really woke me up to what is really happening. It is very, very real. There are thousands, millions, and even up to a billion animals that have already perished because of these fires. The link, again, is in the description. Um, or you could search up Todd Jerkers on Facebook and find it that way. And there's many, many different fundraisers that you can contribute to. 25 cents, a dollar, $10, $15, anything will be beneficial and will be used to help save these animals. So don't hesitate just because you might not be able to contribute a huge amount. Any amount, anything helps. So I hope this has encouraged you to do so and to take, not just talk about, but to take action in this. So thanks again. We'll see you next video. Peace out.